Hello and welcome to another video. This video will cover the difference between Kantian ethics and utilitarianism, and how it interacts in a framework debate in an LD debate round. As a lesson preview, this lesson will cover first, utilitarianism, second, we'll talk about Kantian ethics, and third, we'll talk about the difference between Kant and util. So what are Kantian ethics? Immanuel Kant, the person who made Kantian ethics, was a German Enlightenment philosopher way back in the 17th century. His ideas formulate into three separate categories. The first easiest lens to view his framework through is the categorical imperative. This may sound a pretty big word, but it's actually a pretty intuitive concept to understand. The categorical imperative says that you should treat others as ends of themselves. Essentially what this is saying is that you should never treat others as a means or a mere means, as in you shouldn't treat others solely for your own benefit. The second broad part of Kantian ethics is that ethics must always be universalizable. Universalizability means that any moral judgment must be equally applicable to every relevantly identical situation. For example, under Kant, murdering is bad because if you universalize that action, meaning that if everyone in the entire earth were able to murder another person, that would be obviously bad. So essentially what this is saying is that if any moral judgment, meaning that murdering is bad, should always be equally applicable to every relevantly identical situation, and that that same scenario or that same action should be tested under this frame of universalizability, if it passes that test, that means it is moral. If it doesn't pass that test, that means it's morally not permissible. The third and last distinction that Kantian ethics usually make is an act omission distinction. This says that not doing an action is not an action. For example, if I think of doing an action, i.e. if I think of pressing the spacebar on my laptop, but I actually don't do it, that's not an action because I'm not physically doing it. And even if I'm thinking it in my head, if I don't do the action, that still means that I'm not actually carrying out the action in a physical manner. The act of mission distinction essentially makes a distinction between omitting an action and then doing the action. Now let's talk about utilitarianism. Utilitarianism, on the other hand, was made by Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill, also very old philosophers. The first part of their framework, or their own philosophy, first says that we should maximize pleasure and minimize pain. This is a pretty hedonistic theory of util because it says that we should do one thing that gives us pleasure and then try to cut down on things that give us pain. Utilitarianism says that death and extinction is really bad because if you die, that means it you maximize pain. So essentially, we should prevent pain and you should prevent death or extinction because in and of itself, it causes the most amount of pain possible. The second part, on the other hand of Kant, Utilitarianism says that there is no act of mission distinction. So no matter what you think, deciding not to do something is still considered an action. For example, if I refuse to essentially hold my cup in the air, that's still an action because I'm essentially carrying out the action in my head. I'm replaying the different scenarios in my head and I'm deciding not to do something. So utilitarianism essentially says that whenever you do or do not an action, that's still an action. So you should always do actions that maximize pleasure and minimize pain. Now, sort of the nuances of utilitarianism fall into two separate subsets. The first one is act utilitarianism. Act utilitarianism says that you should produce the greatest good for the greatest amount of people, no matter the situation. Rural utilitarianism is a little bit more moderate than that. It says that there are situations where the greatest good could be the best option in the short term, but as a principle, it would decrease happiness. So rural utilitarianism says that you shouldn't always strive to maximize pressure and minimize pain, i.e. there are always scenarios that might be bad if you solely focus on maximizing pleasure. Essentially, rural utilitarianism says that we should have certain principles or certain guidelines on which actions are in fact good and or bad. So now let's talk about the nuances between utilitarianism versus Kant. So as background, the person is holding a lever and the train is hurtling towards the tracks. If the person pulls the lever, it redirects the rails to the one person. But if the person doesn't do anything, five people would die. 
So according to Kant, and according to his act of mission distinction, remember act of mission distinction means that if you don't do an action, you're not culpable for whatever happens in the future, says that essentially by not pulling the lever at all, you're not culpable for any dead people because not doing an action is not an action. So if the person just raises his hands in the air, doesn't do anything, and just lets the trains go past the five people, you're not actually killing them because you're not actually doing an action. On the other hand, utilitarianism says that you should maximize the most amount of pleasure. And so, essentially, since there are five people that are going to die if he doesn't do anything, utilitarianism would actually pull the lever, because five people dying is worse than one person dying. The no act of mission distinction again says that not doing an action is still an action, so we should take the best action possible. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned the basic understanding of Kant and Util, and how it interacts in a debate or how it interacts with each other.